Hey, it's Brandon. Today I'm going to be doing another Cold Pop Thunder Round. Now, you may be wondering what's a Thunder Round? A Thunder Round is when a member of the Cold Pop podcast does a review of a comic, usually 60 seconds long, but sometimes they go over. I usually go over. So we'll see how this one goes. Today I'm going to be reviewing Doctor Who Time War Victorious Monstrous Beauty Number、no. 1. By Scott Gray with art by John Ross and coloring by James Alfredi with lettering by Roger Lane Creech. Now, I may have pronounced any or all of those names wrong, so I apologize.、Um, let me explain what this comic is about. Doctor Who TV describes it like this The Ninth Doctor and Rose find themselves in a place where no TARDIS is ever supposed to go the Dark Times, an ancient era forbidden to all time wars. The universe is young, but war has already been born. The Vampire Alliance is swarming across the cosmos, consuming everything in its path. The Doctor discovers that not all the stories surrounding Time Lord history match up with reality, but some of the horrors are actually worse than the myths. Rose becomes the first human in existence, and that's a very dangerous thing to be. Personally, I thought this story was better than Defender of the Daleks in some ways, but not so good in others. As I said before, I think a Doctor Who story has to do three things well it has to have a good story, it has to have good art, And it has to feel like a Doctor Who comic. So I'm actually going to start with the last two because I think those are kind of quicker, and then I'll finish with the story, which I think will take a little more time, and I also think is the most important aspect. So, as far as the feel of the story, I think this definitely feels like an episode of Doctor Who. In fact, it almost kind of feels like the 50th anniversary. It feels very large and very universe spanning. And I think it definitely does a good job of capturing Rose and the Doctor. You can't really see it here, but they definitely are written like their characters from the show. They definitely feel like they're right out of the show. As for the art, I think that was really well done. I think that, as you can see here, the ships and everything are really well rendered to really make you feel like you're a part of the action. And it also just makes the action itself feel really expressive and cool. And then there's also pages like this. Where the monsters are really well drawn. Like, I feel like that monster, that's a terrifying bat right there. Like, it scares me. It leaps right off the page. Terrifying. And then there's pages like this, where you see like these decrepit old, they seem to be vampires, I assume, and they also feel like very scary and very like menacing. And I think that's really down to the art. Lastly, the story itself. I thought this story was obviously much more action oriented than the one before. As you saw in those pages I showed, there's a lot more going on, there's a lot more fighting, and that's obviously what I wanted from Defender of the Daleks. So, in that sense, this does much better. But I do feel that this had the opposite problem of Defender of the Daleks, where it doesn't set things up very well. I think if you don't know Doctor Who lore, if you don't know history, you might be very surprised to see vampires everywhere. And bats and things like that. And this is going to be a spoiler, so be prepared. I'm giving you a little second to click off if you don't want to get spoiled for the comic. This page. So it turns out this person holding the gun here is Rassilon. I didn't get that sense at all as I was reading the whole comic. Now, maybe that was just me being like lazy or something. Maybe I wasn't paying enough attention. But I didn't get the sense that that was who this character was. And If this is supposed to be the reveal, I think it's way too casually done. So that's just an example of like, I think the exposition could have been done better in this issue. But overall, I think this is a really good issue. If you get a chance to get Doctor Who Magazine, I'm pretty sure you can get a downloadable PDF version on their website. And if you're in the UK, I definitely suggest trying to get it sent to you and get a physical copy. I'm pretty sure I've seen some other people with them and they look great. Obviously, I'm in America, so I cannot get that without probably paying very high shipping fees, so I have to get the PDF version. But I do think that anyone who can get a physical copy should try it because this was definitely a really good start to another aspect of Time Lord Victorious.